All right. YouTube, what's up, y'all? We got another episode of Female Entrepreneurship. And today we have a special guest. We got Denise Phillips. She is, hails right outside of Toronto. She is the owner of Royalty Beauty. Uh, but more importantly, she is my favorite sister-in-law. Denise, welcome to the show. Hey. So before we get started, uh, would you mind showing the audience? I see we, you know, you're in the middle of your salon. You want to give us a brief tour of your, your business? Of course. So this is my studio space. Um, you have like all the shampoo conditioners over there. Okay. And this is kind of where we, we like to hang out. Got a little TV for entertainment. And fun fact, this was actually in my garage and we just kind of renovated it. Oh, okay. Okay, I see you out here. Okay, very nice. Well, I know that um, you've been styling hair for about 10 years, um, but you always haven't been a businesswoman. So can you talk about kind of your transition from an employee to now a kind of a sole proprietor and owning your own business? So I started right after high school. Um, after high school, you never really know exactly. Well, some people do, but I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do yet. And I've always like been obsessed with hair. So my dad kind of said, why don't you do a trade? And the trade I picked was hairstyling school. And I worked at the same salon for about four years after going through like the whole school process. Um, and I just built like really good connections, went to a lot of hair shows. I went to a lot of like, sometimes my salon would uh, send us to different like places. So I went to New York, I went to Colorado and a couple other places for like hair classes classes so I really invested a lot of time into kind of perfecting the craft but also my biggest thing was just watching other more established hairstylists and kind of picking up tips and tricks and seeing how they cut hair and picking like what I liked and what I didn't like so I specialize in cutting um, but I also specialize in like styling bridal hair and then also braids braids weaves and those things um and then, yeah, so I worked there for about four years. I worked at another salon for like a couple, maybe like two years. And then I worked at one other one. And finally, during COVID, I realized like I kind of have like a different idea of the services I'd like to provide and the vibe that I'd like to have for my clientele. Mm -hmm. So coming into a salon, especially after COVID, um, people like to be in a more intimate, like kind of more private setting. So it's really just me and my client. And I've just also kind of building that kind of um, calm environment and having like more of like a loungy kind of like chill vibe is kind of what I go for. So starting off working for other people was great because you build your experience. Um, you learn how to run a business, even though I'm still learning. Um, you learn how to run a business. You learn how to provide great services for your clientele, but you also learn like what you like and what you don't like. And so working for myself, I've been able to um, kind of create more of like a, a fun environment as well as a business. Okay. Very nice. All right. Uh, so I guess my next question would be kind of what kind of dovetails off the first one? What kind of inspired you to, I know you said COVID kind of helped, but was there anything else that kind of inspired you to like, I don't need to work for anybody else. I, I can figure this out on my own and kind of just build my own brand. Um, when you are in like the beauty industry, you know, your biggest days are on the weekends, but obviously you have to be able to balance like working and also your private life, like your personal life. So working for myself allows me to set up my schedule where I can still accommodate everybody, but then I can also still have free time to do the things that I need to do to either prepare for work or just like have a social life and all that kind of stuff. Um, but also what really pushed me to starting my own business was just because I feel like um, sometimes, especially with black hair, there's not a big, um, there's not a big group of people that know how to work with it and not just do hair, but also learn how to like take care of the condition. And I found that when coming into the salon, a lot of black women felt like they weren't being re represented well, or not even just black, but just people with curly hair. So learning the things that I know now, I've been able to set them up in a way that they're comfortable. It's a safe space to talk about what they want and what they don't want to do with their hair. Um, and how like a lot of people don't really know how to do natural hair. So being at a salon where there wasn't so much of that type of representation, knowing what I know with both 
like all textures, I can do that comfortably in my own space. I can allow the amount of time that I need for each person. Nobody feels rushed. And also I just kind of like being able to set my schedule up how I want to set it up. And I can, like, I know that there's not like a big group of people. So sometimes you and your, your clients actually become friends and they may have something that they want to talk about, but it's just us. So you, they're in a safe space to do so. So I was able to kind of set up a space that's like fun for me, fun for my clients. And also they can bring their kids. Like if their kids are getting their hair done, I put on movies for their kids. In a salon, you don't have that. You just have like a bunch of people that are around you. So you don't really get to make it more personal to the person that you're with. So it was kind of just developing those relationships and then also being able to do things a little bit differently from what I originally experienced working in salons. Okay. He's able to kind of make a glove fit for each person that, that comes into your shop. Exactly. Okay. All right. Well, my next question would be kind of what are some of the, the pros and then also the cons of being your own business? Like you control everything from start to finish. So kind of speak to that a little bit if you could. So working in a salon, I was just the hairstylist. All I had to do was do your hair, take pictures, and like that's about it. Whereas now working for myself, I'm the hairstylist, I'm the janitor, I am the assistant, I'm the receptionist. And I think the hardest thing for me was being on top of like being a like the receptionist because they have a really, really big part of like running a salon. So like they take calls, they book your appointments, they like kind of handle all of that stuff. So now I have to know how to do all that. And sometimes you get calls or you get messages while you're working on clients. And a lot of the times, especially if I'm doing like a braid service, I might be working later. So then by the time I'm done, I just want to sit, but I can't. I still have to clean the studio. I still have to set up all my appointments for tomorrow. And then also like reply to all the clients that are messaging me as well. So that's the difference. Um, kind of the harder part of what I experienced. And then also like your pay, you have to be on top of your taxes. You have to be on top of like, um, just take, like jotting down all the, all the income that you're getting to be on top of that is a lot. Cause once again, working in a salon, they just hand you your, your paycheck. Yes, you are watching your numbers so you can make sure that your pay is correct, but it's like a, a little different. They kind of handle most of that. So it's like when you run your own business, you're kind of everything in one, unless you have people working for you as well, which I'm not there yet. Okay. All right. So some provide some flexibility, but some added responsibility you, you maybe not have anticipated when you first started. So that's, that's good to yeah. hear. All right. So I guess the final question to kind of wrap this interview up would be, what would be a piece or two of advice you give to our audience and your audience out there that are maybe trying to transition to become their own? A business owner or and are scared to do it or just some helpful tips or hints that you can give them to kind of facilitate their transition as well um if you have an idea like write it down because when I first got into like running my own business it wasn't like I was I didn't super plan it out the way I would have if I was to do it all over again I kind of just did it so if I was to I feel like if I wrote everything down on paper in like very detailed um like a very detailed way I would have a I probably would find it was a little bit easier but I kind of just started doing it I started doing it from home so write it down but if you have something that you are really interested in doing do it because I was talking about working for myself for so long and then I was always like mm, not sure if this is the right time not sure if I'm ready but when are you ever like really ready? You know what I mean? Like you kind of just have to go for it. So that's what I did. And especially if you're building up good connections with people while you are like, before you start your own business, you're building these good co connections, you're building like good relationships with clientele. I have people that have been following me since I was in hair school and they just followed me everywhere that I went. And now they're comfortable where I am now. So it's like, you build those relationships with those people. You don't ever burn bridges. And you also make you network. Network networking is a big like part of growing a business, and you learn from so many people. So yeah, if you have an idea, write it down. Write down your goals and put down like when you want to accomplish it. Write down all like all the information you need, and also like don't be scared. Just do it because it will work out. It worked out. 
All right. They, the proof is in the pudding. There we have it. All right. So that, that wraps it up. Another episode uh, from our owner, Denise Phillips of Royalty Beauty Output. All your company, IG, all that information will be in the comments pinned. But uh, thank you again for your time. Uh, Hoodie Hustling family, thank you again for tapping in. Like and subscribe to the channel. But that's it. We're out. Take care.